Joseph Carey Merrick, better known as the Elephant Man, was born in Leicester a century and a half ago. The film starring John Hurt and Anthony Hopkins made him famous, but we still know so little about the terrible condition that caused his deformities. But now cutting-edge research could shed new light not just on his disease, but on the causes of cancer. <laughs> Joseph Merrick was intelligent, articulate, and likable. Yet because of his appearance, he's gone down in history as the Elephant Man, shunned and avoided, attacked and abused. <laughs> These are Joseph Merrick's bones, stored at Queen Mary University of London. Inside Out has been granted rare access to film them and the casts taken from his body. Merrick left his remains to science, but previous attempts to extract DNA failed because the skeleton was bleached to clean it. Now, 125 years after his death, New techniques mean these bones may finally yield their secrets. He suffered from a very severe form of overgrowth, um, where the tissues in certain portions and parts of his body were massively overgrown, hence the reference to the, an elephant. Other parts of his body actually had quite a normal appearance. And this tells us that whatever the underlying genetic problem was, it is one that is relevant to the fundamentals of the way in which a cell grows and knows when to stop growing. The research has barely begun, but already there's huge excitement about what may be uncovered. Whilst I wouldn't predict that Merrick is sitting on the cure for cancer, it is through studies of this nature that we will have a better understanding of what it is that determines how a cell moves from a normal state into this abnormal process of dysregulated cell growth. Merrick's story fascinates people across the world. Jeanette Sitton and May Sue Wei Strachan have been researching why he continues to intrigue us. He was just such a brave individual. And it makes us feel, well, OK, if Joseph could be brave like that in face of everything that was going wrong with him, perhaps that, that will give me some inspiration to cope with my own lot in life. There have been many theories about Merrick's condition. We still can't be sure what it was, but it may have been Proteus syndrome, an overgrowth of skin and bones named after a Greek sea god who changed shape. There are several related illnesses, and despite changes in our attitudes, they're hard to endure. We have unfortunately had um, one suicide of a young man in his 20s because of the difficulties he had living with a condition, a protest related condition. Um, and we've dealt also with a couple of other families whose uh, teenagers, late teenagers, were finding difficulty with that and had suicidal thoughts. So it isn't something that's, um, that goes away. It can get more difficult as the years go on and equally into, into middle life. Lee Street, Leicester. This is where Joseph Merrick was born. But thousands walk through without knowing its history. Inside Out has asked two historians, Richard Gill and Stephen Butt, to devise a Merrick tour. And the first person to experience it is John Merrick, a descendant of Joseph Merrick. People come from all over the world to see the birthplace of Joseph Merrick. And it was here. We're outside what would have been the last house on Lee Street, and he was born in the last but one. But no house, no street, no plaque. How would he have been treated in those early days? He was treated very badly. His stepmother more or less threw him out of the house. 
he was sent out to fall ribbons and other things on doorsteps, but doors were slammed in his face. So what with doors slammed in his face, jeered at in the street, stones thrown at him, he made no money. One day he came home having made nothing. His father beat him savagely. That decided it. He left home and voluntarily went to the workhouse. This is the entrance to the workhouse. Imagine a great gaunt building up there behind one of these small gates is where Joseph Merrick would have walked into the workhouse when he gave himself up to the workhouse. Um, you can imagine 900 other people inside there, orphans, the disabled, the infirm. That's what he went into. Would there have been much sympathy for him? in the workhouse? Well, yes, there was. I mean, we know the authorities organised for him to have an operation at the Leicester Royal Infirmary to remove the trunk that was growing from his lip. Um, and it appears to have been successful. But then it grew again. In 1884, Merrick left the workhouse and this is where he came. This is the famous uh, theatre of varieties, the Gaiety Theatre, the Gladstone Vaults, and the landlord was Sam Tor. Not a lot left here now. It must have been a bit like King Kong, only instead of a gorilla, it was Joseph Merrick. And Sam Tor would appear on stage and warn the people that behind the curtain there was a terrible creature and he couldn't guarantee the safety of the audience. And then the drums would roll. But for poor Joseph Carey Merrick, it was a living. Well, I think Joseph has left us two legacies. One is his remains, which hopefully will actually lead to people being cured or relieved of, of various conditions. He also leaves his story which is being used to help break down prejudice, break down the fear of, of people that are different or not normal because of disfigurement, because of race or creed or whatever the reason is, whether bigotry and prejudice, he's helping break it down because he's a common denominator. I am not an animal! 